Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Christina assures Molly that Ava will pay, Ava posts bail, and Brennan continues to seduce Carly. Anna accuses Brennan of removing the FBI's evidence on Carly from his Metro court chamber. She wonders what he wants from Carly. He acknowledges only that he enjoys Carly's company. Anna knows he is working on something. Why else would the WSB establish a station here? He agrees with her on that. The WSB does nothing without a reason. Brennan claims he has no idea what the WSB's motivations are because he is now just a lowly agent obeying their orders after being demoted. Anna inquires about Valentine, asking if he's relaxing on a beach somewhere with Charlotte. He observes that if Valentine is, it is because someone has tipped him off, and he could go. He asks Anna which side she is on. Anna responds, whose side indeed? She exits. Carly is working with Trish in the restaurant when Scott, Ava, and Kate enter to make bail for celibate Ava. Carly approaches them, asking how Ava isn't in jail. Ava stated she pleaded not guilty and was granted bail. Carly can't believe she's here acting as if nothing happened, Christina might have died, and Christina's baby died. Ava claims that was a tragedy, but it was not her fault. Ava explains that she is here to get her belongings. Carly replies she can't because her suite is a crime scene and locked up. Carly also advises Ava that she must locate alternative lodging because her current accommodations are fully booked. Kate's inquires whether they can at least acquire a table. Carly says she will send someone over. Ava, Scott, and Kate sit at a table and celebrate Ava's independence. Ava was astonished when Kate's testified at her hearing that she is involved in an ongoing inquiry. Carly overhears and wonders if the FBI is aware of the probe or if Kate's is simply trying to bring down Sonny. Kate's claims his job is to arrest criminals. Carly claims to be seeking a vendetta and informs Ava that Kate is exploiting her in the same way he used her and Jason before. She informs Kate's that he does not care about justice, the law, or even his son. Kate's warns her not to discuss his son. She inquires about where he has been residing for the previous few months. Where does his son live? Where does Sonny live? She claims it's only a matter of time before the FBI discovers what he's doing. Carly walks away, and Scott splits since the celebration has turned sour. Ava warns Kate's not to let Carly get to him because Sonny has indoctrinated her for decades. Ava also informs him that Sonny ordered Jason to scare her while she is in jail, and she is concerned for her safety. Ava claims Jason accused her of replacing Sonny's medications, which she did not do. Nonetheless, Jason and Sonny are aware of the placebos. Kate's claims Clemens, the pharmacist, is safe. He asks whether she will tell him who switched the medication. Ava says she does not know, but do not tell Sonny. Brennan walks into the restaurant, and Kate notices him and mutters, I can't believe he's not in prison. Brennan goes to the pub and asks if Carly is still there. Later, Carly encounters Brennan, who invites her back to his suite to finish their supper. She believes it's a poor idea. He asks if he can buy her a drink here, and she accepts. They toast to new pals, and she wonders why he's in Port Charles. He confirms what Anna stated and reveals that he is the new WSB chief in town. He acknowledges he was given a choice between posts here and in Bali. Carly cannot believe he chose Port Charles. He says that once you've seen one tropical paradise, you've seen them all. He adds, you are here. She calls that a line. He claims it's true. Meanwhile, Ava can tell Brenna has scared Kate's. Kate's insists it's nothing and returns to Sonny. He discloses that when the moment is right, he will take Sonny directly to the pharmacist. Kate's intends to use the pharmacist as bait, and he will arrest Sonny before he can do anything to hurt him. Tracy hosts a tea party at the Quartermain home for Violet and her stuffed animals. Violet claims her tea set is the most gorgeous she has ever seen. Tracy explains that it was her mother's. Violet says there are many images of her mother around, and she was very attractive. 
Tracy said she was, and she was quite sweet and kind. Violet wonders why she keeps arguing with her. Tracy thinks it's what families do, and the Quartermains do it more than most. Tracy claims no disagreement with her mother lasted long because everyone adored her and she always got her way. Their talk shifts to animals. Violet doesn't understand why Tracy dislikes Annabelle too. Tracy complains that the dog is given free reign in a house full of antiques. Tracy joked that they should set up an obstacle course in the front yard. Violet likes the concept and suggests they ask Monica. Tracy says no since Monica would most likely answer yes. Violet explains it is Monica's house, Alan gave it to her. Tracy snaps that her brother was too generous for his own benefit. Violet saw generosity as a good thing. Tracy claims her brother was a decent man, but he preferred to make other people happy above himself, which can be taxing. Violet had seen his photos, and Monica claimed he was a doctor, and they were madly in love. Tracy confirms that they were a fantastic match, but Alan gifting Monica the house was a stretch. Violet points out that without him, they would not have a place to live. Tracy admits this and inquires as to who informed her that Alan had given Monica the house. Violet announces, everybody. Blaze tells Christina at the hospital that she cannot go on tour right now because of what she has gone through. Christina describes this as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to which she cannot say no. Blaze claims that is exactly what she is saying. Blaze questions Christina's decision to push her away, despite the fact that she adores her. Christina says if she truly loves her, she must leave. Christina sobs because she loved her baby so much and now she's gone. She is feeling empty and has no affection to give anyone right now. She believes it is unfair to Blaze to give up something wonderful while sticking with her could make her life miserable. Blaze feels they can get through it together. Christina cries, knowing that even if that happens, she will eventually hate or detest her for giving up what may have been. Blaze claims that will not happen, but Christina knows a part of her wants to go on the tour. Blaze acknowledges she does, but she believes Christina is forcing her to choose her profession above herself. Christina agrees that she is, and that Blaze deserves to live her best life, which she does not currently have. Blaze ultimately agrees to leave, but if she needs her, she can call her. Blaze comments after the tour concludes. Christina stops her and says they won't make any plans right now. She has no idea what her life will be like in the future, and she cannot set a timetable for grieving. Blaze wonders if they can at least check in with each other. Christina says that they can, and she wants her to be happy and enjoy her life. Blaze sobs that she will miss her so much. Christina knows she'll be doing what she was born to do, and seeing her fly will make her extremely happy. Christina says she'll be extremely proud of her. They kiss, and Blaze leaves in tears. Christina sobs alone. It's been over six months after General Hospital murdered Austin Gatlinholt and hinted at a larger conspiracy by leaving a message to Ava Jerome that read, You're welcome. And in six months, we've gotten no closer to discovering who killed Roger Howard's third Port Charles character. What's going on? No friggin' idea. It's as if the program has forgotten that it wrote two mysteries, who killed Austin and who sent that note. And has made no attempt to solve them. The fact is, we have not forgotten. Darn it, we want answers. Maybe the disappearing plotline, which wasn't a fan favorite to begin with, was a stroke of genius. Maybe because General Hospital has spent the last several months trying to cast Ava as a remorseless villain akin to Hannibal Lecter and Attila the Hun, which is completely unfair, by the way, it's saving the reveal of the note sender to get her off the hot seat. If Austin's murderer is powerful enough to get away with murder, he or she would be able to prevent Ava from serving time for pushing Christina to compete in hotel diving. He or she would be strong enough to prevent Sonny from taking Avery away from her mother. Who do you suppose sent the note? And do you believe General Hospital will ever pick up the dropped plot? As you can see in the brand new promo below, emotions are running high as the femme fatale posts bail and is released from jail. Christina could have died from the freefall into the pool, Carly reminds Ava. Her baby did die. However, Christina's former stepmother does not appear to be the one Ava should be concerned about. A distraught Molly tells TJ that we need to do something about what happened to us. 
They're not the murdering type, though, they're more likely to file a civil complaint with the assistance of this returning figure. Jason, being aware of the recent developments, asks Sonny what he intends to do. A good question, and one that Ava finds terrifying. Christina, on the other hand, appears to be planning a particularly heinous murder. I can promise you, Christina responds. Ava is going to pay for what she did. Mm -hmm -hmm. We'll be all right with it as long as Sonny, Carly, Jason, and others pay the consequences of their crimes. I can't wait to watch how the soap's new headwriting team manages to map an escape path for Ava from the corner into which she has been painted. Soaps.com has the most recent General Hospital spoilers from Monday, August 12th, through Friday, August 16th. While one woman receives an enticing offer, another is taken aback by a frightening phone call. Also, a life-altering decision is made, as is a surprising arrest. Continue reading for more on the upcoming drama in Port Charles. Everything could change for Christina and Blaze when the singer receives a very tempting offer. How much risk will Willow take by making such a big decision? Maxie is going to learn more information as Nina decides to confide in her. Carly is in for a huge surprise. Will Anna's understanding have anything to do with Valentine? Ah, you want confirmation that things are returning to normal for Sonny? He has once again taken Jason into his confidence. Christina takes a decision that may surprise some. Carly's admonition to Ava draws battle lines between the ladies and Sonny's life once more. Tracy says it's time Violet learned a little history. John has another strategy. I wonder if this one will be more successful than his last? Michael's remarks leave an impression on Sasha. Tracy gave Violet a history lesson yesterday. What will she teach Cody today? Gia lends an ear when Jocelyn needs someone to chat to. Lean in close and listen as Willow shares a confession. Being a godfather, we have to presume Sonny's offer today is of the you-can't-refuse sort. Does Maxie have a valid reason for concern? Someone is about to be startled when Michael extends a somewhat unexpected invitation. Cody to the rescue. Or at least Cody in the attempted rescue. Felicia and Mac are typically on the same page, but tonight she's telling him what she believes he should hear. Jason updates Sonny on the latest. Jason, like a hound with a bone, digs and discovers exactly what he's seeking for. Who is on the other end of the unpleasant phone call Laura is about to receive? One soap opera's performers recently let loose and revealed decades of backstage secrets. Someone is going to get a pair of matching bracelets from John, who makes a fairly impressive arrest. As if they hadn't gone through enough in recent weeks, Molly and TJ are forced to make a devastating decision. Meanwhile, Sonny approaches Christina and offers her a promise. But will it be one he can keep? General Hospital spoilers predict that Agent John Jagger Cates will devise a new strategy and hope it pays off. John is clearly determined to defeat Sonny Corinthos, but he is up against some formidable obstacles. For starters, Sonny is now taking the correct medication, so he has a lot clearer head and will not be as readily provoked. John had earlier tried to get under Sonny's skin at the courts and provoke him into a physical altercation, but Michael Corinthos stopped him. Sonny is no longer on placebos, so John can't anticipate locking him up to be as simple. Sonny should be able to control his rage and be more cautious about having meltdowns that could land him in jail. Agent Cates intends to prosecute Sonny with considerably greater crimes, so he'll need another tactic to keep him in prison for the long haul. However, John's best hope of persuading Jason Morgan to flip on Sonny was lost when the recorded evidence against Carly Spencer disappeared. Even so, John will remain focused on his sunny takedown target, which leads us to the new plan we discussed. It appears that John will tell Ava Jerome about his plans before taking action. Maxie Jones will experience alarms during the week of August 12th to 16th. It appears that James West will face another problem, but Damien Spinelli may also be involved. Spinelli and Sam McCall devised a ruse to steal Agent Kate's credentials, allowing them to gain pressure on Jason. Spinelli couldn't destroy the evidence against Carly, but he still unlawfully hacked the system, with Sam as his accomplice. John knows when his credentials were last used to access the tape, so he may recall that day at the pool and conclude Sam was operating a hoax to assist Spinelli. 
Will John be able to collect enough evidence to capture these criminals? GH has left a loose end here, so John may understand this is a completely new avenue for Jason to pursue. According to General Hospital teasers, John will make a stunning arrest on the August 16th episode, so Jason will be furious if Agent Cates detains Spinelli and possibly Sam as well. According to our predictions, John may once again persuade Jason to flip on Sonny and save other people he loves about, so we'll keep you updated on all the worrisome news and tight spots. According to General Hospital spoilers, the breakup between TJ Ashford and Molly Lansing Davis is inevitable. Christina Corinthos Davis has been predicting Molly and TJ's separation for a long time, but she never imagined it would happen this way. TJ and Molly love each other, but it isn't always enough for a relationship to overcome the obstacles they face. The loss of Molly and TJ's baby child could be enough to end their once happy domestic partnership. Of course, this might lead to new romantic partnerships for TJ and Molly. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.